Doug Abortion Jones is back in the news and actually has been in the news several times this week. And the best way I could categorize this is Doug Jones is like a really, really bad secret agent. In other words, James Bond, the Mission Impossible guys, he's like a secret agent, but he's really bad at his job. (laughs) If you've ever seen the cartoon version of Batman, and I'm not talking about like the 90s cartoon, if, if you go on YouTube and search for how it should have ended and watch any of the ones with Batman in it, where every time he meets a girl that he just kind of thinks is attractive, that particular Batman, who's really meant to be more funny than serious, um, he just constantly tells women that he's attracted to, that he's Batman. And he says, like, you want to know my secret identity? And so because of that, he's constantly revealing that he's Bruce Wayne <laughs> to women that he just thinks are somewhat attractive. And that's kind of how Doug Jones is, is that he tries to play off this game that he has a secret identity. He just really sucks at keeping that secret identity a secret. So that being said, I want to delve into what I'm talking about here. He's trying really hard to pull off this double lifestyle where he's trying to be two different people at the same time. But the problem is he really isn't fooling anybody. He has put out this week completely different messages to Alabamians and to fundraisers. So he's putting on one face, putting on one mask for the people of Alabama, and he's putting on a completely different mask for the people that are fundraising for him and trying to donate money to his campaign. And why is this? It's actually pretty clear. He knows that he can't fundraise very much in Alabama because the people of Alabama don't like him very much. (laughs) And so what he does is he tries to separate out his messaging to the people that are donating to him from the messaging of the people that live in the state who he's actually supposed to represent. And because he doesn't really fit in with the Alabama voters, he shows his true colors to his fundraisers. So what do I mean by this? You remember when he was campaigning here and he kept trying to convince everybody that he was a moderate, that he was a a sort of a Dixiecrat, an old school Democrat that believed in family values and all of that stuff and was going to vote conservatively, at least on the social issues, but he just happened to have some Democrat leanings. That was kind of the the facade that he put out there to the voter. That's what he constantly tried to communicate to us. But the thing is, any of us that were really paying attention, and I warned you about this, other people in Alabama warned you about this, Matt Murphy, Del Jackson, we were all talking about how this guy has a pretty distinct record of being a radical. And whenever he was talking to closed door meetings, he would talk like a radical. Well, just this week, he did another display of this. He put out several ads, none of which went to people in the state of Alabama on Facebook, which really shows his true colors. So let's look at this one. This is an ad, and you can actually see on the right side of this, by the way, we thank our friends at Yellowhammer News for putting this together. Um, You can see on the right side here, you can see the states that this ad ran in. California, New York. You'll notice that Alabama is suspiciously absent from this. And the reason is Doug Jones knows he does not want the voters of Alabama to see these messages because these are the messages he's sending out to fundraisers saying how liberal he is and how important he is to the Democrat cause. So if you'll read that ad right there, it says, don't take our word for it. Even election expert Nate Silver knows the path for Democrats to take back the Senate goes through Alabama. Doug Jones has to win for us to have a chance. But this isn't the only ad. Let's look at ad number two. Again, you can see over to the right, Alabama, nowhere on the list in this particular ad. So here it goes. Mitch McConnell would want you to scroll right past this message, but it's too important to ignore. The path to taking back the Senate goes through Alabama. Ad number three, the math is simple. We can't take back the Senate without Doug Jones winning in Alabama. We did it in 2017. Now Doug Jones needs our help again. Are you with us? Okay, ad number four, same thing again. The path to 51 seats goes through Alabama. If we want to take back the Senate, we have to make sure Doug Jones wins. Are you ready to win? Help Doug Jones now. Ad number five, 
Doug Jones to uh, Doug's path to win is pretty simple. Register voters. Work hard in Washington for real solutions and tell the stories of the Alabama in truth. But we need your help to do it. Are you with us? Again, you'll notice Alabama is nowhere on the list for how these ads played out. And if you're wondering what these ads led you to, what these ads were asking you to do, when you click on them, it takes you to a fundraising page. That's what it does. And the link to this fundraising page reads, quote, if we want to protect the progress we've made, Doug Jones has to win in 2020. The future of Medicare, Social Security, and our health care, in other words, Obamacare, depends on it. You saw what happened when we came together in 2017, and we can do it again. Will you step up to make sure Doug has the support he needs to win? Chip in now to support Doug Jones for Senate. Okay, so did you notice a pattern in every single one of those ads? Every single one of those ads, which none of them went to people in Alabama, all of them went to people in states like California and New York, blue states. The running theme between all of them was essentially, if you want the Democrat Party's agenda to go through, you need Doug Jones. He's showing his true colors. He's saying, look, I'm on board with Chuck Schumer and the DNC and every radical, insane idea that they have. If you want those ideas through, you need Doug Jones to win. That is the message that he drilled home in all five of those ads, none of which went to voters in the state of Alabama. Now, why would Doug Jones do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The guy knows where his biscuits are buttered. He does. And the reason that I say that is this is not the first time that this has happened. Back in February, he ran a national emergency, uh, sorry, anti-national emergency ads. You know, ads saying that he would stand against the national emergency declaration that President Trump put out there, that he was going to vote against it. And none of them ran in Alabama because he knows that message is super unpopular in the state of Alabama. And so because of that, you had Doug Jones, again, showing a completely different side of himself, portraying himself as a completely different kind of person to people outside the state than he does to people inside the state. And he's doing it because he knows that his stances and his policies do not represent the people in the state of Alabama. For example, Jones pulled in about $100,000 from Americans abroad. And to give you an idea of how unusual this is, Richard Shelby has currently raked in exactly zero dollars from donations abroad in 31 years of office. Now, Doug, uh, Richard Shelby, the guy has an amazing war chest. He has a lot of money in his reelection bid. He spent a lot of it against Jonathan McConnell in his past reelection. But the point in all that is, Doug Jones knows that he just does not get a whole lot of money from the state of Alabama because he doesn't represent Alabama. He is a tool for the Democrat Party, and he's taking up a space in a ruby red state, and he knows that. And that's why he's trying to say all the, to all these big Democrat donors that want him to do their bidding, and he does. He's saying to them, look, give me money or you're going to have another really conservative senator, senator who's going to be opposing all these things that you want. And that's the reason that they're giving him money. If you look at OpenSecrets.org, for example, out of the top five contributors, only one of Doug Jones' top five contributors is from the state of Alabama. And it's the University of Alabama. Now, you guys know I'm an Auburn guy, but look, sports aside and where I went to school aside, here's my question. I would be saying exactly the same thing if it were Auburn that was giving money to Doug Jones' campaign. Where the heck does a government entity like a state school get off donating money to one candidate or the other? I do not understand that. And I... Maybe they do this too. I don't know. Maybe my own university, Auburn, is giving money to Doug Jones or Richard Shelby or other candidates. And if they are, that's wrong too. This has nothing to do with the fact that I'm not a big fan of the University of Alabama. It has everything to do with the fact that a state entity 
a entity that is at least partially funded by your taxpayer dollars is giving money to one candidate. Giving money. It would be wrong if they gave it to both candidates, but at least then it would be kind of more even. There is no reason for the University of Alabama to be donating a dime to a political candidate. They are a state entity. So I don't know why they're on this list, but they're the only donors out of this top five that happen to be from the state of Alabama. All the rest of them are from somewhere else. And do you know what his number one donor is? Alphabet Incorporated. Do you know what Alphabet Incorporated is? It's the parent company of Google. They're based in California. So yeah, those are the people that are putting money towards Doug Jones' campaign because they know that they're super, super far left and that their agenda is not going to get through if Doug Jones doesn't win. Or at least that's what Doug Jones is telling them. And, you know, based on the way the Senate went in the last election, they're probably right. But nonetheless, the reason Doug Jones is doing this is because he knows that he has to pander to them and tell them who he really is, tell them that he really is a far left liberal Democrat. But when he campaigns in Alabama, he tries to do this thing where he campaigns as a moderate. It's very, very clear to anyone that's paying even a monicum of attention that Doug Jones is very, very far left. For example, Doug Jones ranks at a 15% on Freedom Works. So if you're looking at how they vote, Doug Jones ranks at about 15%. And you may look at that and like, okay, that is really bad. But 15% means that he does vote with Republicans 15% of the... No, that's not how Freedom Works does it. It goes with pro-freedom, anti-freedom. There's actually Republicans with really bad ones. But the point is, if you're looking for someone who is a conservative, Freedom Works is a pretty good scale to look at and see how people vote on different things. So Doug Jones from Freedom Works, 15% lifetime score. Chuck Schumer, about a 6%. So granted, much worse than Doug Jones on this. However, Senator Elizabeth Warren gets a 15% as well. And Cory Booker and Kamala Harris both sit at 17%. Now, I want you to think about this, Alabama. Kamala Harris and Cory Booker are more conservative than your senator. How insane is that? That Doug Jones is a sitting senator for the state of Alabama and has a worse freedom score than Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and is on par with Elizabeth Warren, all three of whom have approved and, and given their, even though they didn't vote for it, and we'll get to that a little later, but even though all three of them said of the Green New Deal, yep, great idea, we support it. A plan that would cost $92 trillion over the course of a decade. But yeah, Doug Jones is a moderate. Keep believing that lie. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell... And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.